Everybody's heard about climate change, but does our impact on the Earth go deeper than that? Fast forward 100 million years, will our presence on the Earth be remembered? And what will it look like? Scientists break up our Earth's history into blocks of time, each with their own key characteristics. Some have reasoned that our impact on the Earth has been so profound that we have caused the end of one time period, known as an epoch, and are at the beginning of another, the Anthropocene. Let's take a look at how we have changed the Earth's surface. We've built up, we've covered the ground, we've made new materials. But this is just scratching the surface. What's happening beneath our feet? So Joe, can you tell us a bit more about how we delve beneath the Earth's surface? Well Lucy, since the Industrial Revolution in the 1800s, we have developed the Earth's resources to such an extent that we are now very much reliant on the Earth for a source of materials and for energy. And the majority of these can be found below the Earth's surface. Can you tell us a bit more about the materials that we take from the Earth? Well, as humans, we're very good at finding solutions to problems. In this case, we've devised very clever methods for removing substances from the ground. In the absence of human intervention, these materials would stay locked up. Such materials include metal ore minerals, which are mined using gigantic open pit techniques. And these materials can be used for man-made products such as steel. Interesting. So can you tell me more about the Earth as a source of energy? Well, the Earth provides many different types of energy, such as fossil fuels and geothermal energy. By far the most important are the fossil fuels. These are coal, oil and gas. I have here an example of shale. This is a special rock because it contains gas trapped between the layers of sediment. Companies can drill into rocks like this and extract the resources within, but this comes at a price. The burning of fossil fuels has had a profound impact on our global climate and particularly the carbon cycle. So what is the carbon cycle and how does it affect us? Let's go and find out. So Matt, can you tell us a bit about how the carbon cycle actually works? Sure. The Earth can be thought of as a system of living things, soils, rivers, the ocean and the atmosphere. And each part of this system stores carbon. And carbon can also pass between these parts of the system. Carbon's really important because it forms the basis of life on Earth and it all starts with plants and algae which are able to capture it from the atmosphere. The, the system naturally finds a balance between the amount of carbon that's passing up into the atmosphere and being released, and the amount that plants and algae are able to capture. When these two terms, or when, when the amount going up into the atmosphere equals the amount that's, that's being recaptured by plants, the system is in balance, and the amount of carbon in the atmosphere remains stable. So how has the carbon cycle been changed by humans? Humans have unbalanced the carbon cycle. Firstly, by deforesting large areas of the Earth's surface, we've reduced the amount of room that larger plants, which store more carbon, have to grow. In addition, we've also been burning wood and fossil fuel, and this has re released more carbon into the atmosphere than would be the case in a natural situation. But how does this affect our environment? So we know that there's now more carbon in the atmosphere than there would be naturally. And a lot of this comes in the form of greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide. These gases are very good at trapping heat on the Earth and preventing it from being released into space. The effect of this warming is, for instance, uh, shrinking glaciers and shrinking ice caps, rising sea level, more drought and more wildfire. And all of these changes could be recorded in the rock record. Thanks, Matt. My pleasure. So we know that our actions are having a big impact on the Earth, but when did this start? Tom, humans have been around for about 200,000 years, but when would this new Anthropocene epoch start? Well, there are two main reasons for thinking about this now. Firstly, although humans have been around for a long time, it's only recently that we've connected up all across the world to have a truly global impact. The second reason is simply practicality. Carbon dioxide and, uh, nuclear, and fallout from nuclear bomb tests are really big, easy chemical signals to pinpoint across the world. And taking these chemical signals will give a uniquely well-defined um, start to this period of time. OK, we've heard about how humans have changed our conditions on Earth today, but are there any similar changes that have happened in Earth's ancient history? Yeah, about 500 million years ago, animals started to dig beneath Earth's surface. 
before these, these burrowing animals, any organic matter would remain locked up exactly where it was in the muds and soils. But when animals started to dig down, they could recycle this material and make it available in a way it never was before. In a way, humans are just extending this process by mining and drilling for oil and gas. And we're, again, accessing these minerals in a way that we never could before. So, are these situations identical? Well, there are a lot of similarities between the two situations, but the major difference in terms of time scale, animals digging down into the, into the soil happened on a scale of millions of years, but what we're doing today is happening on a scale of decades, which is much, much faster. We've seen how our Earth has changed over time and how we are now the architects of that change. But will we be just a flash in the pan, or will our impacts be so great that we leave a record in the rocks? Whatever label we decide to give it, only time will reveal our true legacy.